Hi golfers and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, make sure to subscribe and like this video. Also, I want to hear from you, so leave me a comment below because today we're going to talk about speed, what it means, how you generate it and what it does to your golf swing. So let's jump into it. All right, so speed. Speed is a topic that so many golfers want but not very many golfers have. And I think there's also a huge misunderstanding around speed and where it happens in the golf swing. Because if I just tell you, oh, your speed is fast, what am I referring to? Am I referring to the first part of your swing, like the backswing speed? Or am I referring to the speed through? Or am I referring to the speed from the top of the backswing to the ball or from the ball to the finish? So you see what I'm getting at here. So speed in itself is a very vague word and I do not like vague things in the golf swing because this game is hard enough already so let's not be super vague on top of that. So when we talk about speed I like to actually refer to more as timing because it refers to the ratio of speed from your backswing to your downswing to your through swing. So the ratio really is what matters in hitting the ball well, not the actual speed of the entire swing. Because again, speed varies from, I mean, you start at zero speed, right? And then you'll have zero speed on the top. So again, there is a massive difference in speed wherever you are in your golf swing. So let's refer to it as timing first and understand that that's the ratio between your actual parts of your golf swing. And that in general, I want to generalize that to the backswing and the downswing. So these are the two main parts where the ratio is super, super important. And I also want you to understand how we can generate speed and where we lose most of our speed. Um, and amateurs are usually not very much aware of this, but I want to paint a picture for you guys. And I want to paint a picture outside of the golf industry because that really helps a lot of the time, like relate to the physics of it, because we've all seen it. And I'm sure you guys have watched the Olympics, um, the Winter Olympics or ice skating and, you know, figure skating. And it's stunning, it's beautiful, but I'm sure you guys have seen these amazing athletes do these pirouettes. I don't know if I'm saying this word correctly, but you know what I mean, when they spin. And when they spin slowly, they usually have their arms out and I realize I do not look like a bird in paradise here. I look like a very sick bird, but you know what I'm saying? They basically have their arms wide out and then they spin slower. And when they pull everything in and they do these nice little thingies I think this is one of them maybe you know what I'm saying so when they pull everything in they spin super fast so apply that concept to your golf swing so what this means in translation is that if you have your arms flailing and getting away from your body and are disconnected from the body because that's the center of gravity in ice skating and in golf so the further away you get from your center of gravity the more the slower you'll be and that's what we don't want so that's why you see in all the tour players and the, the good players, they actually have their hands and their arms very close to their body at impact and also throughout the rest of the swing. But impact is obviously the most important piece of this, where we want to make sure the speed that we're generating in this entire swing of ours from start to finish at impact, we want to make sure that the speed gets translated and is the fastest into the ball. So if you look at these athletes and at, you know, good golfers, I want to look at the setup and here if we drew a line if, you, if we drew a line up my shaft now at setup and then we I went through my swing and then I'm back at impact I actually want my hands and my shaft angle to be as close to that initial setup as possible a lot of people and amateurs look like this and so the shaft angle has changed drastically and my arms are further away from my body versus here, right? They're here. And what happens then is my arms in the finish get even further away and you're losing all that power you're generating throughout impact because your arms are losing the connection to your body. So I think that we've now painted the picture sufficiently for you to understand that the major objective to put as much speed as possible into your ball is done by keeping your hands as close to your body as possible. Um, and really in golf, that is the connection. And of course, when you go to the back of the, the, the golf swing, there will be times where your arms are further away from you. And that's fine because you're pretty much loading, right? But coming down here is really where you want to make sure your connection between your right upper arm and your rib cage is made and that it remains there and that your hands almost feel like 
they're getting really close to your thighs at impact and they're not just flailing out. Because again, you're losing speed, you're losing power, it will not translate into the ball, just like those ice skaters. The closer to your center of gravity that you can be, the faster you're gonna be able to actually swing and translate that force into your ball. So now you're gonna ask me, how do I stay connected? And there's many different ways of how to stay connected. One of my favorite drills, it's super simple, and I'm sure you guys have heard about it, but I'm still going to tell you, is if you have a towel, you're gonna grab it, and you're going to wrap it around your torso. And you know, a lot of people know this drill, but a lot of people also uh, do it wrong. <laughs> so uh, take your, this is an eight iron, I believe. Yeah, I'm an eight iron girl. I never do anything technical without my eight iron. Um, so eight irons are fine, nine irons are fine, pitching wedges are fine. Don't go above that with anything. Don't take your driver out because it completely negates the whole point of this drill. Make sure you're pinching this close to your rib cage on the left and right side. And now we're just hitting three quarter to half shots. We don't want to be all the way up and we don't want to be all the way through because the towel is going to fall. So this is literally the nine to three drill. You can do this also without a towel once you get better, but this is really going to establish connection. And it's going to feel weird, but if you can hit these balls straight, you know that you're well connected in this impact zone. And that's really all we're going for right now is that impact zone and making sure you're keeping your hands and arms as close to the center of gravity as you can, so you can generate the most speed. If you cannot hit these balls straight, keep doing it until you can hit them straight. It's really that simple. And this is really gonna improve in your long game as well. And then you can take the towel away and you can just hit your regular shots, but keep in the back of your mind to make sure to keep your hands as close as possible to your body throughout that impact zone. So don't let them fly out. If you feel like you're getting disconnected, make sure you keep them here. Make sure you keep them close to your body and generate that centripetal force that helps you actually generate speed. And that's really all the magic, guys. I hope this helped. I do love talking about, you know, feels even outside of the golf space, because again, I think it's much more relatable. So let me know in the comments if you understand this whole ice skater uh, parallel, because I think it's actually so easy um, to draw that parallel. I feel like everybody's seen it. Everybody has you know, enjoyed it. It looks nice, but it also makes a ton of sense. And applying these concepts to the golf swing really helps us visualize what we're going for and why we want to do certain things. So I hope you loved it. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to this channel, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.